Hey there, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode 60. You like that? I don't get to say hey there very often. No, you don't. I really don't. Today we're going to be talking about composition, and probably not exactly in the way that you've heard about it in the past, but we're new at this, so give us a try. We'll see if we can't give you something new to think about. Hi, my name is William Beam. My name is Lee Beam. And before we get started talking about composition, I've got a little preamble for you. First off, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show. You're going to find show notes available at williambeam.com slash episode 60. And of course, there is a transcript of the show there for free. So if you want to read this later, be my guest. Love from Lee. Exactly. Lee, Lee creates our transcripts for us. So all love to Lee for creating the transcript. Thank you. <laughs> And of course, there are links to subscribe to the Photo Flunky Show. We would absolutely adore you if you would subscribe on iTunes or Google Play or whatever service that floats your boat. We if, adore you anyway, actually, but we'll adore you more. Yeah, so you get, like, you get like bonus points for subscribing to the show. Yes. One other thing I want to bring up is I have a free ebook available. You can get your copy at williambeam.com slash free book. So that's only two E's. I didn't do like free ebook. It's just free book. And this book is about photography about creative portraiture in particular. It is kind of not necessarily going through the technical details, the lighting and all that other stuff. It is going about the emotion and the creative aspects of portrait photography. I would really love it if you take a look at it. Please give me your feedback. And of course, since it's a free book, you're free to share this with anyone you want to. It's a really nice book. I, I'm not just saying this. I really do enjoy, enjoy looking through it. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and jump right into what we're talking about today in it is about composition and really, you know, kind of what is composition and what are the things that go into your composition. You've probably heard many people tell you about rule of thirds, leading lines and so forth. We're not really going to talk about that stuff today. No. No, no. What we're really talking about is composition is why you're doing it in the first place is to tell a story. You're, every photograph you're taking, you've got some kind of message that's kind of coming out with it. Anything from a snapshot, it's like, hi, I'm here at Walt Disney World to your most elaborate portraits you can come up with. You've got something that you want to say, something that you want to show, but there are certain elements and principles that you use to make that message. Yes. And that's what we want to talk about today. Really, when you get down to composition, it is a combination of elements of art and principles of design. Yes. And that sounds complicated, but hopefully we'll make it sound simple for you. Yeah. You start, don't think too much. Once you get this, you get to feel it instead of think about it. And we're going to break it down. The art elements are really going to be what? These are the things that you can use as tools in your composition. The design principles are how you're going to use them. Yes. Is that, if that makes any it, sense? It, it, that will, it will probably make sense as we discuss them. Well, let's start off with, you know, art elements. So first thing, color, and that can go for black and white, you know, and an absence of color is a statement in itself. Yes. But color and how you use it. Are you looking for a splash of color? Are you looking for something minimalistic? A single color throughout the, I know if we think of like high key images, usually it's going to be a very white, very bright color with maybe elements of your subject just kind of popping out a little bit. Yes. But your use of color is going to have an impact and it's something that you have can choose as a tool. Are you shooting for color or are you trying to use color to drive home a message? I mean, it can highlight and accentuate things that can lead you in. It, it also, color is a very powerful element in that it, it, transmits some kind of mood as well. You know, yep. colors have a lot of symbolism and the symbolism isn't something that people made up. It's because certain colors are known to evoke a certain mood or feeling from people. And there are times when the color contrast can really just kind of combine together. When you have different colors and something just kind of pops out at you, it really accentuates what your subject is, or in, in some cases, maybe what your subject isn't. But color is a powerful tool that you've got at your disposal. It's one of the art elements. The other one is going to be shape. And you may not be thinking about this, but people inherently recognize shapes. You know, something like a triangle is a very powerful shape. Yes. Makes me think of the leading lines and things. You, you find your little triangles and things like that. I know we don't want to discuss that side of it, but it's just an example of how these things are present without you consciously thinking about them. I, th I think lines are inherent as well. You know, it's like people have always talked about leading lines and they've also talked about place of a composition with a rule of thirds. You know, are you on this line or are you on that line? But I'm thinking elements in your image that are going to have an impact upon your viewer and how they see it and how they perceive it. Shapes are going to be one of those things. Concentric shapes are, you know, if you're going to have concentric circles going through your image, are you squaring everything up? And shapes don't necessarily have to be perfect. No. One of the elements that I've seen of this is there's a photograph of, you know, well, you've probably seen this in a number of places, but photograph of an old stone bridge 
going over the water. You catch it with a calm water and the bridge arches up and the reflection is underneath and it looks like a perfect circle. Oh. That is that is a wonderful use or element of shape. And that's also to do with the angle that you, you've got to position yourself for composition. Are you looking at shapes in your compositions? How are you actually kind of sizing things up? I never, ever think about shapes, rule of thirds, leading lines. I don't know. I, I think it, sometimes I just get a feel. I, I like to feel my photos more mm -hmm. than I like to think about them. And you get people who do things, with, they've got a very good technical mind. And I think those people are going to actually see the shapes and lines. I tend to feel the shapes and lines without consciously thinking about them. And sometimes I'm trying to compose a picture and it just... I, I'm not really thinking about why this doesn't work, but I know when it doesn't and I'll just, you know, decide not to hit the shutter button. And that's usually what it is. It's just that I'm not consciously thinking about it. I just, I get the feeling and when I, I feel when it's right. I think that's important. When I'm talking about shape, I'm not necessarily saying that you see a shape in the photos. Like I give an example of one where you do, but that kind of hits you over the head. Oh, wow. There's a circle underneath that bridge. But some people do. Some people's minds are just very sharp that way. And they're very in tune with, with recognizing these things very consciously. But one of the things I will look for for shape is if I have different elements in a photo and I look at them and say the space between this shape or excuse me, the space between this object, this object, and this object kind of creates a shape. I'll, I'll see the empty space as a shape and space in itself is, you know, one of the art elements you want to use. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And that's where I come back. It's like, you may not be thinking there's a triangle in there, but I am looking for shapes, whether squares, circles, triangles, or, or something else. But I'm looking for something that kind of like, okay, if you connect the dots, there's a shape in there. And I found that actually kind of enhances, you know, how people react to a photograph. Well, it draws the eye. Well, people aren't, I don't think they're consciously thinking, oh, there's a star or a triangle or a box. Inherently, you notice that shapes are there and there's some kind of reference between uh, different items inside the photo. It gives you a sense of balance. It kind of grounds you or draws you in or puts you in a certain positions when you view, position when you are viewing the, the photo. And if you look at art elements, let's take photography out of it. If you're going back and you've got someone who's doing drawing, mm -hmm. that's the first thing they'll start off with. They'll draw a circle, they'll draw a line. And they'll use these shapes as a foundation for yes. whatever they're going to create. And there's no reason that we as photographers can't do the same thing. Well, photography is a form of art. Oh, absolutely. I know this is a widely debated subject. Not going to get into it, but anything creative has elements of art in. Well, and that's why I kind of want to bring this up is maybe we're not, we don't talk about this enough, but since photography is an art, you need to bring in the same kind of concepts and maybe study different types of art to understand what's behind them and then use those elements in your photography. And it kind of changes the way you see things. For example, we mentioned space, but also texture. And I, I love texture. People, I think, especially if you get like side lighting on texture and you see these little things crawling out of a of an old decrepit wall or... It gives you a 3D feel. You almost kind of feel like you can touch it. And that's one of the things of dimension inside of a photograph is you have a foreground, a middle, and a background. We've heard that advice a number of times. Yeah. But space isn't just empty area in your photograph space goes in all directions yeah. if you can combine a sense of space in your photograph from foreground to background or from side to side or high and low what, whatever dimension you want to go into it's a flat 2d image we get that but you can represent space through perspective yes all right we want to get to the other half of uh composition with design principles and one of the keys there is balance yes uh, tell me what you think when you see a lot a photo that's really out of balance is it lopsided or what what does it make you feel it's almost an unsettling feel it gives you a sense of being uneasy you know I, I translate this into everyday life i like to feel like my feet are solid when i'm on the ground i'm the kind of person who doesn't care for the thought of going and walking out on ice i'm, I'm actually afraid of falling and i want to feel like i'm secure and i think that extends itself into viewing pictures or looking at any kind of scene you, you sort of get that <gasps> feeling when you're um, when you see something that's not balanced, whether it's a person who's maybe got their center of gravity a little bit forward and they're leaning over into a big body of water that looks dangerous, it doesn't matter what it is. That feeling of balance, if you if you've nailed it, you give a sense of almost calm or excitement. The, the person feels safe viewing it. But that's the nice thing about a photograph. You you may not always want a, your viewer to feel safe. Oh, you can use this the other way around as well. Yes, exactly. For so effect. you can kind of manipulate the emotions of your viewer. That goes back to your story. Yeah, it, it really goes back to your story. It's like, what do you want your viewer to feel? If you're not evoking a feeling, then you've got a nice document. But if you really want to turn your compositions into art, you want to make someone feel something. Do they feel insecure because there's a lack of balance? And also there's a graphic design 
a matter of balance as well, too. Yes. Are you heavy on one side and then there's nothing of interest on the other? And sometimes you do that on purpose. For example, if you're doing something where you want to put some text or put something else in there or a composite. So there are times this is not don't do it or it's wrong if you do it. It's just be aware. Well, you know, one of the things if for photography, there's going to be a use for it. It might be something that you hang on your wall as art or maybe you're just shooting it for something where you are going to put text. You know, yeah. there's a, a number of people that put things out on social media where they need room to write something. <laughs> yeah, and I've learned the hard way because I tend not to do that. And I'm learning that there are times when I need to do that. And well, you've really been diving into that for, for your site that you're bringing up. Yes. And you're putting out a lot of social media with messages on it. I am. And what have you learned since then of trying to design your photograph so that you still have room for your type? I have learned to, I, I like a tight crop. I've always been one for details. Those of you who have been listening to us for a while will know this. I like to zoom in, get really tight. I've had to let that go because when you're shooting something for a purpose, you can still have your personality in there, but your style might have to give a little bit so that you can serve the purpose for which it's designed. And that has meant that I do my little crop photo, which I think the, the tightest crop is probably Instagram because it's going to square up. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to start zooming out and zooming out more and more because things like Twitter, for example, where you've got the wide one, then I want to give maybe have something to the sides, the subject to the side very slightly so that I can put the text on the side because these these platforms you know they they dictate that you have to use them so differently to make them work so yeah i've learned that one photo is is not um there's no one correct way to shoot it depends on your purpose we're kind of breaking away from design but it's also going back to your purpose of what the photo is and we found out for the optimum format for instagram twitter and facebook are different shapes yes and in pinterest as well pinterest for that long vertical one yes you can't necessarily shoot one shot and hope that it works great for everything because you'll be doing a lot of cropping. That's true. Now, I'd say that Instagram or, or any kind of square crop that you might want to use is the most difficult one if you don't care to have your subject dead center. A square crop, really, yeah, you're, the middle you're is much, the middle, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you pretty much go on bullseye with that. Yeah. But it's like Pinterest. You might have this wonderful panorama. Well, how do you turn that into a vertical? I know it's it's just so hard. It, it can be. And there are just different creative ways that you have to think about how am I going to use this photo? And that's going to affect really the story that you're telling and where you're displaying it and what are the constraints of how you're going to do it. But then you all have to put, combine your art and your design principles to make it fit the format. Yes. Okay. Speaking of uh, design principles, let's get back. Another one is contrast. And that's more than just a slider in Lightroom. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're looking for natural contrast. And I find it's much easier if you have a very simple photo where there's not mm -hmm. too much detail or background in there. But, you know, contrast is, could be something as simple as color contrast or it could be as stark as black and white contrast. It could be. It could be light. It could be textures. Textures, you know, something very smooth and something very heavily textured also forms a very stark contrast. It could be something bold and something narrow. In portrait photography, your shadows on your subject's face are contrast. Yes. You've got the area that's lit and you've got the area where it's falling into shadow. And that makes it interesting because you kind of, you don't see everything. It's boring if you see everything lit completely the same. Yes. One of my favorites is movement. Photographs, are obviously, they're a fraction of a second in time, usually. Mm -hmm. Some of them, long exposures, maybe a bit more. But I kind of like the idea of showing a bit of movement inside of my photos. Yes. And it could be a freeze frame where you just see that I'm coming to like a, a horse race. You know, you see motion or, or a runner. You see that they're moving. But I also like it if you can show some blur in there and you get part of them sharp and part of them blurry you know there's movement going on. But also getting back, captured. yeah, getting back to the composition with movement, even if it's a freeze frame, whether it's blurry or not, you can also use your space and your composition to accentuate it by putting, you know, is the subject entering the frame or are they leaving the frame? You know, where's the, you can put, if it's um, kind of panoramic style, you can have the empty space where they've, you know, the, the part they've already covered where they're leaving behind them, or you could have them facing in and almost diving into the empty space ahead of them. So this all comes into your your composition of, of movement. Yeah, and it really is, what is the story you want to tell? And where do you want to direct the eye? Sometimes, like if you're shooting a race, you want to give them whatever the nose of whatever's running or moving. You want to give some space to the side so they have room to move into it. Yes. Usually, if they're just about to exit the frame, it's kind of not as good visually, but unless you're combining that with something else to saying... Hey, I'm getting the hell out of here. Goes back to your story, right? It really does go yeah. back to your story. Another element that we like is pattern. And we're just simply, we naturally pick up on patterns. Yes, we do. You see a row of chairs and you know that your eye kind of follows it. 
you can use a pattern interrupted. Yes. So you see a row of chairs and one of them is a different color than all the rest, or maybe it's turned in opposite direction of all the rest. It catches your eye. It, yes. This is an element that, of design that you can put in to kind of say something's different about this. You should be paying attention to yes. it. And finally, emphasis is where do you want the emphasis of in your photos? Like, And usually that's going to be your subject, but what do you want really to stand out more than anything? I do this sometimes with, if I'm doing like a cityscape, I'm going to put emphasis on the streets with all the lights running down through there because I want to show a little bit of movement, but I want to, it also brings up some contrast, but emphasizing a part of your photograph just kind of enhances it. We talked about this actually a few weeks ago when on the show about fireworks. Yes. I will do emphasis on the fireworks themselves because that's really what it's all about. And it might be over a castle or it might be over a city or something like that. But I'm going to amp up the colors on the fireworks. I'm going to brighten them more than anything else because that's kind of what the photograph is about. So you can use color. You can use sharpness. You can use blur. You can use any tool at your disposal. But you can go ahead and uh, provide some emphasis in there as a design principle. But all of this really is how to tell a story. So what we kind of wanted to bring to you is just something different besides rules or guidelines to follow. But rather things to think about. The art elements are your tools, color, shape, line, texture, space. And then your design principles are kind of how you're going to arrange those art elements to build your composition. Yes. Hope this helped you. Thanks so much. Happy photography. <laughs>